Hey, what's going on everybody? In today's quick video, we're going to take a look at some coins that I got in from Aiden Coins. These are going to be 90% silver coins. And when I make purchases like this from Aiden, they tend to throw in some uh, kind of unique coins when it comes to buying 90% silver. And we're going to show you those today. So if you like classic constitutional 90% silver, then today's video is for you. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Florida Stacker YouTube channel. And as mentioned, we do have some nice 90% silver coins. So we're talking coins that used to be in circulation, namely here in the United States. I do obviously have uh, some Canadian, as well as a little bit of uh, Caribbean, I would call it, a couple coins from Cuba living here in Florida that uh, fall within that non-pure silver category of circulated coins. Now, you know, it varies from country to country, but in the United States, where we're going to focus today, the circulated coinage of the past was 90% silver. All right, so you get a, a pretty good amount of silver in these circulated coins. This also used to be a relatively affordable way to stack precious metals. Stacking is it's kind of a term if you're new to it for uh, folks who buy and hold physical gold and silver coins. You know, you stack it up, right? You, you buy uh, when you get paid or each month or however, you know, maybe once a year. And you hold those coins as a method of holding wealth in a tangible asset. Of course, today we are moving in the opposite direction of what 90% silver really was. And that was you hold coins in your hand that were actually worth something okay they had a metal that was valuable vice uh, you know the basic crap that we have today in circulation so when you would hold a half dollar back in the 50s and the 60s sure this one's not a great uh, looking specimen but it's the silver content in circulated 90 percent silver that is valuable not obviously the quality of the coin not a collectible coin but Kind of wanted to put that out there so it has changed <laughs> rather i did just drop a dime that looks like yeah dropping dimes right i think it was a mercury dime yep there it is right there okay so uh the 90 percent silver has gotten really expensive to stack so i do kind of look at it more from uh, today in 2023 for those that are more interested in history as well as collectability uh, I don't think anything we're going to see today is going to be very valuable when it comes to collectability, but I do see some pretty nice examples and maybe that's not going to be the case. So let's go ahead and get started with our basic generic stuff. So we saw our Ben Franklin half dollar here, 1960 Benjamin Franklin half dollar with the classic Liberty Bell from Philadelphia. We've also got a mercury dime, this looks to be a 1926, and I will be honest and tell you that my eyes are not as good filming the coins now as they will be when I'm reviewing and editing the video. So if I get a date wrong or a mint mark wrong, uh, blame my middle-aged eyes. Okay, so we've got a nice grimy Roosevelt dime here. Doesn't matter, right? If we're stacking this, even though it can be expensive these days with premiums, here is a nice circulated mercury dime. This one's from 1944, same year as D-Day in Europe. So pretty important time in uh, our nation's history. Here you go, the beautiful mercury dime, one of my favorites. And I've got some nice BU mercury dimes that I do bust out from time to time for certain videos. All right, we got a 1963. So this is going to be the last year of the Benjamin Franklin silver half dollar. In 1964, which was the final year of 90% silver in the United States when it came to your, you know, your circulated stuff, not to, you know sets that you buy from the mint. You can still get those, those sets today. Um, a lot of them are proof sets that have 90% silver or different variations of silver content. However, 1964 was the last year you could get it, you know, just go down to your bank and buy a roll of half dollars and it's 90% silver. Okay, so we got 1951. Doing pretty good with the Ben Franklins today. Usually tend to get a few more uh, of the John F. Kennedy 1964s when buying. But I do like the mixture that you get with Aiden coins when it comes to the half dollars, quarters, and dimes. They do a good job of 
of getting an assortment of items. So there you go, 19, uh, it looks like 64 to me. The last year once more, Roosevelt Dime, nothing special. And uh, let's go ahead and see, this is a 1935, I believe. We'll figure that out, as mentioned. Uh, got some good toning going on with that Mercury Dime. Another Roosevelt Dime here, not too much to talk about. I'm trying to speed through these guys so we can get to the better looking stuff. Then we've got, uh, let's see, a 1940 Roosevelt Dime and a 1943, did I say Roosevelt? I meant to say Mercury Dime. And let's go ahead and look at this Merc here. So 19, was that 42 Mercury Dime? All right, got two more here. We got another... This one's actually a better quality Mercury Dime. This one looks to be a 1939 Mercury Dime here. Still has some luster to it, not too bad. Little spot there, no big deal. All right, and then we get to the last of our circulated bullion in this order. Not really bullion, guys. These are circulated constitutional silver coins, but a 1964 John F. Kennedy half dollar. Okay, so we did get also in our order another one of these nice Columbus half dollars. Okay, I've got about three or four of these now that I've managed to get in orders from Aiden Coins over the last couple of years. This is the 1892 Columbus Exposition. All right, so it's got Chicago there, 1492 to 1892, so a, a pretty good gap of time there, 400 years. I think we've got, let's go ahead and look in here. I did send a couple of those away to my dad uh, for Christmas. He does tend to like some of these older collectible coins, but I'm pretty sure I've got, uh, yeah, you'll just have to take my word for it unless I can find it here and edit it into the video. But I do have another one of these Columbus somewhere around here, so we'll find it. Let's go ahead and move on to another nice Barber Quarter. So this is an 1895 Barber Quarter. And the Barber Quarters are not easy to come across uh, when buying 90% silver, especially the circulated kind. But as you can see, uh, Pierre, who is uh, one of the owners at, up there at Aiden Coins, he did uh, throw this in there with my circulated order. So thank you very much for that, sir. Always appreciate it. Great company to do business with. And then we have the Walking Liberty or Stania. God, goodness, guys, I'm all over the place today. We have the Standing Liberty Quarter, 1930 Standings. He, she's standing there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, these are these are really tough to find good examples up too with the SLQs or Standing Liberty Quarters. The dates on them tend to be worn down. That's one of the first things that I notice when getting these particular quarters. Uh, but this date is really easy to read, 1930. So a nice Standing Liberty Quarter. And now we'll get to the final two pieces here. And I'm gonna bust this first one out and only touch it here on the edges. And this is a proof, look at that. Thanks again, Aiden Coins. A proof 1964 Kennedy half dollar. Yeah, that's really pretty. Very nice, very nice. So these are the type of coins that obviously I like to hold for my kids. Um, I don't really collect much. And those of you that have been following the channel know that. I have a limited collection of gold and silver coins. I usually just stack. Uh, but whenever I get a nice example, like this particular example, you know, from 1964, these usually go in a coin flip. So it'll go back in the coin flip and into one of my two children's kind of coin boxes that uh, I'm putting together for them. And our last half dollar is a nice, this looks BU to me, or at least AU. I'm not a, uh, a grader, but a 1937 Walking Liberty half dollar in really good condition. Some good luster, still a lot of reflectivity off of this silver coin. And let's go ahead and flip her around. Look at that. Now tell me that's not beautiful. That is a very nice, <laughs> look at this half dollar, man. This is, this is awesome. Of course, hardly circulated this one here. It probably spent most of its life, uh, you know, in someone's safe, protection. So not necessarily in their safe, but protected. This was valuable to somebody. 
Very nice half dollar there. And wow, let's go ahead and grab that JFK one more time. So these were the two nice, well, there was definitely multiple nice coins in this $5 in face order, but this one here, these two, I should say, are my favorites. And so that's it, guys. What do you think? Um, you know, once more, for those that are new stacking, new to stacking, that is, don't really recommend you buy a lot of 90% silver to add weight in silver these days. The premium over spot for the amount of silver that you get is quite high when buying. And the premium that you receive over spot when selling 90%, especially kind of the junkier 90% silver coins today, it's just not there. It, it's really not a good transaction for you to make in the current environment. I would definitely recommend, obviously not financial advice, but recommend new stackers, old stackers, stackers alike that are looking to add weight in silver, focus more on larger silver bars like 10 ounce and larger silver bars or your generic silver rounds or your lower premium silver coins especially when just getting started in stacking because you do want to get that base of your stack, the, the weight and ounces up at an affordable price when it comes to cash. So that's Florida Stacker's take, but I do like to buy these every now and then. I am a silver bug after all, a silver stacker, and it's neat to have different, uh, you know, historical coins as well as bullion silver coins, silver bars, uh, etc. in your stack, especially when running a YouTube channel, you like to have uh, some variety out for your viewers. So I hope you guys like what you saw today. I will be back soon with some more gold and silver content. Have another order that I just got in from Atmex that we'll be unboxing over the next... Uh, we'll do that here in the next couple of days. And also going to be uh, unboxing some gold, which I'm long overdue for. So thank you all for tuning in today. Really appreciate you being here. And I'll see you soon on another Florida Stacker video. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel.